Hey, what's up YouTube? It's me, Sarah, and in today's video, I am going to be going over how to achieve glass skin. For those of you that don't know what that is, it's basically a very smooth, even skin tone and with a nice touch of dewiness. So I just wanted to share some tips for those of you who may still be struggling trying to achieve that look. First, I wanted to talk about a couple of key points. I want to say how important lighting is. So the people that seem to have perfect skin, like super glass-like skin, where you don't see any blemishes, you don't see any hyperpigmentation or textural issues, a lot of it can also be attributed to proper lighting. I'm gonna go ahead and show y'all a clip of me in natural lighting and then me in some dark lighting. And as you can tell, when you are in darker lighting or the shadows get cast on your face, it can emphasize the appearance of dark circles, bags under your eyes, when essentially that's not always the case. You may not actually struggle with like darkness or these bags if you were just in the right lighting. Another key point I want to talk about that does greatly affect our skin is genetics. Some people are truly just blessed with beautiful, beautiful skin and they barely have to do anything with it. Trust me, I have come across many people in my lifetime where their skincare routine is basically non-existent, but they have beautiful skin on the outside. Um, from what I can see, it's just so nice and smooth, but that doesn't mean that it's exactly healthy. So those are the two things I do want to mention and I feel are important to remind ourselves is that sometimes what we see on media, there are a lot of factors that can play into how someone's skin looks, whether it's right lighting or it's just their genetics. So when it comes to the glass skin look, a huge, huge goal I feel that is attainable for a lot of people is to try to even out your skin tone. So an even skin tone is honestly key. So without having to focus on all the other aspects of our skin, all these other areas that we're trying to improve on, the main one that I feel will help you the most in achieving that look is getting an even skin tone because an even skin tone can camouflage everything else. So think about it. When we apply concealer on a pimple, if the pimple was red and then we apply the right concealer on, it basically looks like it disappeared. Another example is if your skin tone is even, you're not going to notice as much of the textural issues if you do struggle with textural issues like me. I have acne scarring on my cheeks and my temples um, because of my cystic acne battles. But since I've achieved a more even skin tone, I can honestly say that it's really hard to see all these other areas of my face that aren't naturally smooth or perfect. So now I'm going to go into my top tips in achieving that even skin tone, which will eventually give you that glass skin appearance. So the first tip I have is to exfoliate. You want to exfoliate one or two times a week and no, I'm not talking about the physical scrubs. I'm talking about the chemical exfoliating products that will penetrate a lot deeper in your skin than like a physical scrub. So now I want to share my top three products that really helped me exfoliate my skin without disrupting my barrier or overdoing it. The first one is the Versed Doctor's Visit Instant Resurfacing Mask. You can purchase this at Target. This is my go-to weekly mask. I absolutely love it. It brightens my skin tone. It just makes my skin so much smoother and softer. And I don't need to incorporate it more than once a week. So I love this product. I think it's well worth the price and it will last you quite a bit of time. The second product that I really like is from Selfless by Hiram. This is the Mandelic Acid and, and Rice Bran Gentle Exfoliating Serum. As you can tell, I'm almost out of it. I don't use this one every single week, but sometimes I do like to mix it up and use it, but this one smooths out my skin so much. I really, really love it, and it's gentle because I have very sensitive skin, but I do say that this is an awesome product from that line. And the third product that I don't have with me right now, it is the Different Hydrating Facial Cleanser. 
Um, I made a review about it. I'll link everything down below for y'all. But I really like this product because it contains 5% PHA or polyhydroxy acids. It does a great job of softening the skin so it will exfoliate your skin. I think this is a great product if you like to just exfoliate with a cleanser this is a great cleanser to incorporate in your routine whenever you just need that extra boost or whenever your skin feels a little bit congested the next tip i have is to incorporate a retinoid if you are not already incorporating a retinoid in your skincare routine i do highly recommend that you find one that works for your skin type so some people if you're able to go to a doctor i know a lot of people love tretinoin for me, I used it way back at the beginning of my skincare journey when I was really struggling with cystic acne until I just didn't want to go to a doctor anymore. But Retin-A or Tretinoin is great. It is awesome. It really helps control your oil production. It increases your cell turnover and it gives you that nice, smooth, even skin tone. And it actually does also help with any kind of acne breakouts if you do struggle with it. If you're able to afford that, definitely recommend Tretinoin. But if you are looking for over-the-counter retinoid, I love the different gel. It is over-the-counter. You don't need a doctor's prescription to purchase it or try it out. It is Adapalene 0.1% but it's awesome. It's also considered a retinoid. I feel like on the market for something that does not require prescription, Differin is like the next best thing that you could get for your skin if your skin can tolerate it. Um, I have a whole video on Differin, how to use it, what to expect, all that wonderful stuff. I'll link it down below for y'all to take a look at because this was a game changer for me. I do have to say that Differin greatly improved the appearance of my skin in terms of texture and even skin tone, all of that. This is an amazing product to incorporate. Retinoids are just useful in general. It helps get rid of the damaged skin cells. It helps us promote healthier skin cells and in turn um, maintain the collagen production. So you really want to incorporate retinoid if you can. The next tip I have is to always moisturize. I know what y'all are thinking, it's gonna get hot soon, and some of y'all do struggle with oily skin, but even with oily skin, sometimes what may be contributing to that oil production is your skin not being hydrated or it being actually dry and producing excess oil because of how dry it is. So there are a lot of factors playing a role into why your skin is oily, but even with oily skin, you can still find a moisturizer that is lightweight like a gel moisturizer that helps seal in the water content without adding to any kind of oil or greasiness to the skin. If you have dry skin I do recommend going for the hydrating moisturizers. You have a little bit more fun with the moisturizing um, experience just because your skin is dry and it's a lot easier for you to kind of pick products that are thicker and heavier, like a cream, that will help you get that dewy skin a lot easier than someone that struggles with oil, I feel. Another fun um, tip that I like to do is incorporating a couple drops of facial oil into your moisturizer, and that helps add a little bit boost of hydration, and with the dry patches on your face, it really helps smooth those skin cells down. I personally love rosehip seed oil. A lot of people, if you have dry skin, jojoba oil is great. And also including any ingredients with shea butter, things like that can really help seal in that water. And with oily skin types, you know, you can always opt for a lightweight gel-like moisturizer. Those are more fast absorbing. They're not gonna leave your skin feeling oily or greasy, but they can still get the job done. The Verse Dew Point Moisturizing Gel Cream, that moisturizer I feel can cater to a lot of skin types, except if you have really dry skin, you probably want something a little bit heavier and more of like an occlusive. And the last tip that I have is to always wear SPF. And I know what you're saying. I always mention it in every video I talk about <laughs> when it comes to achieving a look or things that you have to do with your skincare. I will always incorporate this tip 
of wearing SPF because I cannot stress to y'all how important it is to protect our skin from those UV rays. And in this video, this also applies to achieving a glass skin look. If your skin is irritated from the UV rays, it's gonna be red. It's gonna show those signs of inflammation or stress from the UV rays and the exposure to it. So you may as well wear SPF, if not just to protect your skin, but also to achieve the glass skin look. If your skin is irritated from the UV rays, it's gonna be a lot harder for your skin to even look the part of being healthy. If you are living in the US, you want to opt for a broad spectrum SPF. It will protect you from both the UVA and the UVB rays. I always recommend at least SPF 30 to SPF 50. Once you get past SPF 50, it's a little bit trickier to incorporate in your skincare routine. I know SPF is a chore to use or to incorporate in a skincare routine, but it is so important. And if you don't already use SPF, all the other steps in your skincare routine just do not matter. All your money goes out the window because your skin's taking a lot more damage than any of these products can fix. So that is the most important step in your skincare routine. You have to make sure you are protecting your skin. My favorite daily SPF that I love to use is the Hero Cosmetics Force Shield SPF 30. I do change it out if I'm gonna be exposed to the sun more, if I'm gonna be outdoors. I like to opt for a higher SPF like SPF 60. Um, the La Roche-Posay Dry Touch SPF 60 with the antioxidants is my go-to for any kind of outdoor activity because it doesn't leave my skin greasy and it has that extra boost of antioxidants to help fight those free radicals. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I know I dropped a lot of information on y'all and I know that some of this may not be the advice that you were looking for when it comes to achieving a glass skin look, but I do have to say taking care of your skin inside and out will take time. So if you are consistent with how you're treating and caring for your skin, you are going to achieve that even skin tone and it's going to be a lot easier for you to get that glass skin appearance. But that's pretty much it y'all. I hope that y'all enjoyed this video. I hope that it was informative in some type of way. All the videos that I feel will be helpful for y'all on your journey to achieving glass skin, I will link it down below so y'all can take a look at and see what other thoughts I have concerning certain products, other informative videos that I may have, and please stay tuned, I post every single Monday.